All right, welcome back to my channel. Today, what I'm going to be doing is building a kitchen island, although this is not an actual kitchen here. I'm in my storage room, and but we are going to be preparing our fruits and vegetables here, uh, some canning possibly. Um, we're not going to actually have a stove in here or anything like that, but we might buy a uh, an electric uh, like stove top or something, but. I'm not 100% sure yet. But anyway, we're going to be at least processing a lot of our food in here, freeze drying. We're going, to be, we're, we're going to be doing a lot of freeze drying. So we're going to be needing an island here. So what I did is I purchased three different cabinets. Uh, these are 24-inch cabinets here. This is an 18-inch and a 24. So that's a total of 66 inches. This here is a butcher block countertop basically and we were going to make this a f at least eight foot in length and they come in 39 inches the biggest i can find or the width the uh widest i can find it but in eight foot they don't make it that wide and i could i could have bought two eight footers but the price would have been astronomical uh, these aren't cheap, even though these are basically cheap cabinets from Lowell's. Um, they, they're probably not cheap price-wise, but uh, quality-wise, they're not, they're not that great. It's okay for us, I just wish they were a little cheaper, <laughs> money-wise. Um, but this top here is a 6 foot by 39. Um, that's the biggest I can find it as far as width, 39 inches. Again, I could have bought, uh, they do sell them in, well, 25 inch, basically. I could, have, I could have got an eight foot by 25, two of those. But again, the price would have been so expensive. I, what I would have done is put them together on the ends and then cut it to the size, the width I, I need. But it would, it would have been way too expensive. So we're trying to keep costs down a little bit. And honestly, now that we got this in here, I think the six by 39 inches, or the six foot by 39 inches wide is plenty in here. And it won't, it'll be perfect for the kitchen. And uh, it'll be away from my weightlifting equipment here. Um, so um, that should work out pretty good. All right, so my plan here is to get these cabinets, put them together, put a top on here, okay? So we're going to have roughly a 15 inch overhang here where we can put chairs on this side. You can sit here also. Um, so that's the plan anyways. And the back side here we have to uh, cover. So I have to buy a sheet of uh, some finished type plywood, uh, maybe half inch, three eighths or something like that and uh, put it on the back side here and we're gonna make it look real purdy. Try to anyways. <laughs> All right, so let me, uh, let me get going here and show you what I'm gonna do. All right, so before I screw these cabinets together, all three of them, we have this door, it's gonna open this way. You're gonna have your drawers, of course. Now this door is opening, right now it's opening this way, but what I have to do is take these screws off here and then basically get this and turn it so it opens the hinges are over there and it opens from this way so what we want is when we're done here we want this to open like this so before i go taking these hinges off i'm going to be measuring from this surface here up to the hinge and then also from the top of the hinge down to that same surface to here then I got what I did is I transferred a line here and a line here from this surface, the same dimensions as over there. So when I bring the door over here, I can line it up between these two here. Now, assuming that these hinges on this door are equally spaced here, and they are. So I measured that. So basically, all I need to do is take this door off, flip it, and put it on this side here. All right, so the next thing I want to do here, 
I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I transferred over where the hinge has to go here. And what I'm going to do with a little Sharpie marker is put it on there. And mark where the hole is going to go approximately. Then I'm going to pre-drill a hole right in the middle. And up here too. That'll help keep the wood from splitting. Okay, make sure it's level or up the top here and it looks good. I can always adjust this. I can unloosen these and I can bring the door up and down. And this here, I can unloosen these and it'll bring the door side to side. So I can adjust it if I need to. But for now, it looks good. And uh, we're going to leave it at that. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is we have to connect these, all three of these cabinets together. And at the front of the face here, what we have to do is we're going to use these clamps here. And we're going to clamp this together. And at the same time, the top has to be flush and the front face here has to be flush. And then down at the bottom here, we're going to put another, well, near the bottom anyways because I got to work down there. So I'm going to drill a hole here and down here to put a screw between these and, and, put, and lock these together. Um, so I'm going to pre-drill a hole here. Now obviously we don't want to go all the way through and here I'm not going to go all the way through. So we want to do it somewhere near the top. You pull it out once in a while to get the chips out. Okay. And same thing down here. Now before you do it, obviously, make sure you're nice and flush at the top and the front here and also the bottom. Make sure you're flush down here also. Okay, so I'm gonna be using these decking screws. These are uh, two and a half inch long and the head here, what I did, I, I wanna countersink the head into the wood. I can fill it in with wood filler later if I wanted to. But I'm going to use a drill here. I know they have special drills for this, but you don't have to go buy all that stuff. Get a drill that's slightly either as big or slightly bigger than the head of your screw. And you're going to go in there and very lightly, you have to be very careful because it could suck that drill in. It just a slight countersink so when you put the screw through there the head will go in under the surface that's all okay good enough now we're just gonna Screw these cabinets together. All right, these should be 
together. Perfect. And then we're just going to do the same thing on this side. Okay, I just finished putting the screws on this side also, one here and one up here. So these are all connected now. Now we got to focus on the back portion. We have to make sure this is all the same here. We can't have it, you know, like that, obviously. So it has to be all the same. So what we're going to do, I got some shim here. And this shim, you can slide it to make it thicker or slide it this way to make it thinner. And we're going to put these shims in the front because that's the, the uh, thickness we want there. And then we're going to take it out and put it back here. And we're going to put a clamp on that. There. So now we know this is all the same distance from front to back. And we're going to do the same thing on this side here too. Okay, now we got to screw these two cabins together. Now normally I would pre-drill these holes, but I don't have a drill long enough because this will hit my uh, chuck here. So, hope for the best. thought that was going to happen. Yeah, not the greatest. Oh well, it worked. Okay, it didn't come out too bad. Now we have to do the same thing here on the bottom. On my uh, table saw, it's, it's basically a half inch. I cut some half inch pieces of uh, two by four actually, and I'm gonna put one there, and then one over here, and we're gonna nail them together from underneath. So I, got to, I have to lay this on its back. We're gonna put these shims here. And the other one over here. Now we're just going to put some screws through here and lock them together. And that'll do it. All right, so this is done. We got the shims here down here. So this spacing will never change now. Now I got to cut out the plywood for the backing here. And we're going to do that next.
I got my sheet cut out here for the back side of the cabinets. The only problem I have here is with the leftover pieces. Let me show you what I'm going to do. So with the leftover pieces here, I'm going to put one here, here, and here. Here's the other one for the middle. So I'm going to use some liquid nails and glue them to the back side here. like this and what that's going to do is here I have a quarter inch uh, step basically this backing here is a quarter inch in from this surface here where it's, where the back is going to lay so this will fill in that gap uh, let me bring you in close and I'll show you what I mean so from this surface here to here there's a quarter inch so this will make up for that uh, step so I'm going to I'm going to glue this on to this and then my backing here will will be glued and possibly nailed to this too. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is put some liquid nails on this board, then I'm going to flip it over. I put it on the face of the cabinets laying down like this because I'm gonna get some of my weights here and put them on top here, make sure it stays glued down good. Okay, I got my pieces on here. Now I am going to do the same thing here for the backing to stick. All right, now we can put on the backing. So I got the backing all glued down, I got it clamped, and I got it weighted. I got about, what is it, 180 pounds on here. Um, this quarter inch uh, plywood has a finished end and a rough end. Of course, the rough end was the side I glued, and the finished end is going to be out here. Um, it was kind of warped, so um, some areas are coming up. So I had to put weight on it to make sure it all stays glued down. So all we have to do now is wait till tomorrow. We have to wait about 24 hours and uh, it should be all set up. All right guys, it's tomorrow. We are going to paint this backing here. I'm gonna put a coat of Kills primer on here and then a coat of paint and then we'll be ready to do our next step. So the kills is nice and dry. It takes usually about an hour, you're ready to paint again. So kills dries pretty quick. Now we're ready for a, uh, this is a satin white we're gonna put on here.
All right, so while this dries, I gotta concentrate on the top portion of it. So we're gonna bring this back up. So while that paint is drying, there is something I need to get ready here. Before I put my top on, the only way to really connect the top to this table is one, to glue it, of course, with liquid nails, or put some screws where these boards are through the boards and into the uh, tabletop. There's a gap here of, uh, what is it, 13 sixteenths. So I ripped some of these boards here on my uh, table saw to fit here to fill this gap, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I got a bunch here. I'm gonna put these boards here. I'm gonna glue them with liquid nails. And then I'm going to pre-drill some holes through there so when I bolt, when it gets screwed to the table, it'll sandwich these in between this and the tabletop. That way these won't bend and break. All right, so let's do that next. All right, so while the liquid nails is drying up here on these strips that I put, now it's time to put the uh, trim on the bottom. This is some trim that I had left over from when I did my room here. So that'll work just fine. So what I do is I cut the length that I need plus the thickness of the, um, of the trim itself twice because it's gonna be trim on that side, it's gonna be trim on this side. In this case, it's a half inch trim, the thickness. So we want the total distance that we need plus a half inch per side, that's an extra inch. And then we gotta cut our, then we cut our angles and it should come out just right. All right, so when we put our trim on the corner here, we wanna make sure that it's all even here. In other words, the, the tips align just perfectly. And then check the other side to make sure it's right where it's supposed to be. Okay, so the other end looks good. Here, it looks good also. I'm gonna put one nail in here And one here. I'm using one inch, uh, well, what are they, 18? These are, yeah, yeah, these are 18 gauge, one inch. We don't want the uh, nails going through to the inside of the cabinet either. So we got the half inch of the trim, quarter inch of this board, plus another quarter inch, the thickness of the inside panel, so they really shouldn't go through or they should be just flush when they go through. All right, so when you're Put your trim in, and if your corners aren't lining up real good, for instance, if I line it up here, and over here I got kind of a gap here. Don't worry about it too much. Uh, white caulk, you just fill that up with caulk, and then when you paint over it, you'll never even notice. Okay, so now we're gonna tack it here.
All right, now it's time to do the corners here. So I got some simple corner trim. So we're gonna put that right here. And we are going to nail it on. All right. So even if you have gaps like this, what I use is this DAP uh, quick seal. This stuff works really good. Works great for the nail heads also. But if you got a gap this big, just uh, squeeze them in there. You don't even have to be all professional about it. And again, when you paint this, you won't even tell that there was a gap there. And then for the nail heads, like here and here, just put a little on your fingertip and just wipe it right on the nail head. And you'll be ready to paint. Even if you got little gaps on your uh, trim, this stuff works great. You just put a bead Real thin bead down like this. And just use your finger. And boom, it's gone. All right, so the only thing I got left to do here is I'm just gonna paint up all the trim and then we'll be ready to put the top on. All right, so now I gotta concentrate on the countertop. Now these countertops, the butcher block, they, they're usually they're sanded, I mean, at least the ones I've gotten. Um, this one here is pretty good. I'm not gonna sand it. If you want to, you can get like those palm sanders, maybe a 120 or 220 grit, and uh, smooth it out real good. And then after that, Wipe all the dust off of it, of course. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a coat of, or maybe two, two actually, of uh, oil-based polyurethane. Um, that should do it, two coats, and that will protect it. Now, if you wanna stain this, you can stain it now, obviously, before you poly, uh, urethane it and uh, but we're we're gonna do it the same as my other table that I did uh, just natural and you want to get all the grit and all that stuff off okay so what I'm gonna do is I like I said put a coat of polyurethane on there two of them actually and I'm gonna use a sponge, just an old sponge, to apply it. And, uh, you just wipe it on. You just keep spreading it around, don't leave it build up in one area, keep moving it around and get the ends, don't forget the ends and the sides. And it's better to apply it with either a sponge or even an old rag, clean, a lint-free rag will work nice because if you do it with a brush, it'll get uh, sometimes too thick and it may uh, cause bubbles. This doesn't cause bubbles and it kind of self-levels too.
So while that polyurethane is drying, what I need to do here is get this ready. So what I need to do is drill hole here, 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 and here, because once I put the top on, from underneath, I am gonna screw it through here and into the table and pull the table right down into the top here. Um, we will also put a bead of uh, liquid nails on here to make sure it stays on good. Um, so let me do that next. So I am gonna put a hole here on an angle because this drawer uh, track here is in the way for my drill to go up straight up and down. So if I put it on an angle like this, I'll be able to put that screw there. So let's see here. I'll do something like this. And another one here. So I let the polyurethane dry for a few hours and now I'm putting on my second coat. So after you first apply the polyurethane, you're gonna get areas like this where it looks like you put too much on, it looks kinda of globby and all that. Don't worry about that, the stuff self levels. So as it's drying, it'll level out and it turns out really nice. So I let this dry overnight and it come out really nice. I'm very happy with it. Um, as you're applying it, if it looks like it's a little too thick in some areas, you can try smoothing it out, but if it still looks a little thick, don't worry about it. It self levels and it really comes out really nice. I'm very happy with it. So the only thing I have left to do is mount it on the island here. We're gonna screw it in from uh, underneath, put my drawers back in, put the uh, door handles and the, and the handles for the drawers and we should be done. All right, so now I gotta put liquid nails down here. Just put a bead down. And that should do it. All right, so we're gonna have about three inches overhang on the ends. And on this side, we're gonna have about an, a little over an inch. So as long as we get it close, then I can move the top around a little bit. Um, so it's probably best to, can you grab it this way? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, ready? Me. Bring it up, bring it towards me. Okay, bring it down. It's, it's pretty close, pretty close. Okay, let me get the tape measure here. Hold on. Very little to me. More. More. Okay. Wow, that's perfection. <laughs> yeah. So here we just got to move it. Ooh, just a little over an inch. About an inch and an eighth. About an inch and an eighth there. About an inch and an eighth. Okay, that's good. So we're gonna let this sit for a little bit because I'm afraid when I try screwing it, it's gonna move. Well, we're gonna let this sit, let the uh, liquid nails harden up a little bit. So when I put the screws in, it won't move on me. Uh, in the meantime, I am gonna put the handles on the drawers in the doors. All right, so when you're putting your handles or your knobs on your drawers and doors here, you have to double, triple check yourself when you're measuring. I got these handles that are going here like this. 
and like this. Basically, all you have to do is measure your total distance of your drawer here. Find the middle, so divide that in half. These are three inches, the spacing of these holes here. So once I find my middle, I go an inch and a half one way, mark it, and then three inches back the other way, mark it, and also measure from top to bottom, divide that in half. So you want these right in the middle, you know, 99 times out of 100, unless you have a special kind of drawer like these here. For instance, on this drawer, I want it right in the middle. But these drawers are really wide, or long, I should say. Uh, I don't want them in the middle. I want them more near the top. So I'm gonna make both of these the same. So this, this, this was six inches here. So these are three inches from the top. I also made this three inches and three inches. So it looks more symmetric, I guess you would say. Um, Plus, you, you won't have to reach down as far when you're opening a drawer. You can just open it like that from here, not from down here. So in order to put these handles on, we have to take this face off um, because the screws are not long enough to go all the way through between the drawer and the face. So if you look inside your drawer, you're going to find some screws. You got one over here and one over here. Just unloosen those and this face will come right off. Just like that. Now we can drill and we're gonna countersink a little bit on the other end. All right, now we're ready to drill and obviously don't drill into the table, right Pete? <laughs> and you wanna find the drill that's slightly bigger than the screws that are going in it, obviously. Now we're going to flip it. And we're going to change drills. Now what we want, these screws are going to go through like that. And that's where we're going to connect the handle to. The problem is these are sticking up and they're going to hit the, the inside of the drawer. So we can't have that. So what we have to do is countersink it a little bit, but you have to be very careful and go very slowly because the drill, it'll want to suck the drill right through the hole and then, uh, and then you're in big trouble. Go very slow. That's good. We're going to flip it over or flip it around to the other the other uh, hole. Uh, this is the inside of the drawer now. And now when we stick our screw in there, the head is below the surface. All right, now we're ready to put the handle on. Okay, and there it is. So that's why we wanted these, the heads of the screws below the surface, otherwise it'll hit this surface here and it won't sit right. Get these things started. And that looks pretty. And for the doors, all you have to do is drill through 
And remember to open your door because you're going to end up hitting your uh, cabinets. And just put your screws through. And now we can mount our handles. And it's best not to over tighten these because depending what kind of material they're made out of, it, it will strip. Just snug them up real good. that looks real nice so guys the only thing I have left to do now is screw this tabletop and connect it to the island itself and those holes that I put in on the top where I put the uh, bead of um, liquid nails that's what I gotta put these screws through now So I finally got it done and I am super happy with it. We've been wanting an island here. We know I know I had to make one and I figured I just better do it now that I got everything else out of the way and the, the storage building is just about finished and I got my gym equipment in here so now I got time to uh, to build the island here. I had time. So I'm very happy with it. This is going to be very helpful for many many years in the future we'll be doing plenty of preparation work on here uh, for our fruits and vegetables and um, yeah I am very very happy we had these uh, stools in the house uh, they're just cheap stools um, they'll work perfect in here I was a little worried about the overhang being too much but uh, it's not because when you're sitting here there's plenty of room for your knees got plenty of room and uh, yeah I like it really nice although these stools uh, we will just keep them in here but we could we probably should get some a little bit lower ones because these are the high stools um, but they'll work They'll, be, they'll work just fine. I don't want to spend too much more money. <laughs> It'll serve its function. It'll serve its purpose. Okay, guys, so sorry for the detailed video, but I wanted to make sure I covered everything, and I wanted, do, I wanted you to see everything that I did. Um, so when you do your island, you'll know what to expect, basically. Alright guys, so thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in my next video.